NASCAR and Goodyear delivered an absolute banger on Sunday at Bristol. I don't hand out absolute banger certifications very often, about as many times as Chase Briscoe will admit that he's wrong when he runs into somebody, but I'm going to do it for Sunday's race at Bristol Motor Speedway because it was a banger. Sure, a lot of it will contribute to the fact that the tires maybe weren't very good, but that doesn't matter. This wasn't 2008 Brickyard 400. I know a ton of people have been saying that on the internet. It's just not. I mean, these cars could go more than eight to 10 laps. The tires weren't blowing out. Nobody was really in danger per se, like we saw at the Brickyard. And it was very much in the team's hands. And it was strategy because some teams were able to manage it. We obviously saw the Joe Gibbs Racing Toyota Camrys were really good at managing their tires. Other teams like the Fords, and eh, not so much. Kind of like around that 40 to 50 lap mark like a light switch as Drake would say they were out they all kind of just acted like the Xfinity Fords at Atlanta when they all ran out of gas on the same lap but as soon as they sort of hit that 45 ish lap mark boom tires were gone and I don't mean like oh the tires were really worn out no I mean like they were down to the cords blowing out like they just weren't very good and Goodyear to their credit came out and they went to the media center about halfway through the race and answered questions and they were like listen this is the same tire same right side tire that they raced uh, at Bristol last fall. They tested it. They said that the only real variable here in the difference is the fact that they're not using PJ1 on the racetrack anymore, but using the resin. And the tires just weren't putting down rubber. The track took zero rubber, basically the entire race. 500 laps, track basically looked the same as it did at the beginning, except for all the clag that was up near the wall, the marbles, if you will, uh, depending on if you've watched Formula One or not. Regardless, the track just didn't take rubber, but it made for a super super compelling race. I mean, there are 54 different lead changes, 16 different leaders. The previous record was 40 lead changes here, so blew that out of the water. Five cars, five. You can count them on one hand. One, two, three, four, five. That's how many cars finish on the lead lap of the race. When's the last time that happened? Oh yeah, good idea. Good question, rather. June 2004 at Dover. That's the last time five cars were on the lead lap. Connor Zilich wasn't even alive back then. Ty Gibbs was like two, if or maybe even one. Regardless, it's been a really long time. I mean, a really long time. 20 years ago, obviously. What we saw on Sunday was old school. It was a throwback. You had a tire conservation race, and that made for a super compelling race. And NASCAR seemed to like it. John Probst from NASCAR came out and said that was one of the best short track races he, may, he thinks he's ever seen. Phenomenal. Do more of that. I don't want to see tires blow out all the time, and I don't want to see Goodyear name get dragged through the mud because this wasn't on Goodyear. This is the fact that they used resin instead of PJ1. Goodyear makes a good tire. What I don't want to see happen is Goodyear panic right here and bring a harder tire to the fall race at Bristol. And the night race, you can basically run all 500 laps on the same set of tires, like we've seen them do at Martinsville before, where they bring a tire and it doesn't wear at all. We absolutely do not want that. Bring the same tire back. Make these guys have to conserve tires. Make these teams have to figure out how to set up for that tire. Because it was, like I said, super compelling. The last 121 laps of this race went green. And that seemed almost unfathomable at the beginning of this race. And instead, you had really interesting strategy. Like Josh Berry in the four car. He ends up finishing 12th. He pitted earlier, earlier than, than what we saw Denny Hamlin do. And he had to go out there and try to conserve those tires. And he was running P4 on speed. And Denny obviously had pitted, maintains the lead in front of Josh because Josh was two laps down. And then we saw Josh kind of fade back through the field because he was trying to make his tires last. Meanwhile, guys like Kyle Larson and Alex Bowman, who didn't look great the run prior on to the final run, they were able to rebound for a fourth and fifth, fifth place finish. And then you have Denny Hamlin and Martin Truex Jr. And at one point, it looked like Joe Gibbs Racing might finish one, two, three, and four. And obviously, Ty Gibbs had some issues, and so did Christopher Bell. And you had the 11 and the 19 of Martin Truex Jr. battling it out for the win. And at one point, they were in such heavy traffic with about 60 laps to go. No, no, sorry. About 60 laps to go, everything kind of went into chaos. You had people backing up, guys falling off the lead lap, tires going down, people just driving around seemingly at granny speed, like far right lane on the highway when you're like the minimum speed's 45 please do 45 and they're like can't go above 40 that's what we saw kind of happening ryan blaney was just putting around david gillen todd gillen todd gillen not david david wasn't in this race todd was he was just putting around guys were just all over the place moving chicanes out there like the milk aduno of the nascar cup series race at bristol guys were having to go around making up time one point, Denny Hamlin and Martin Truex Jr. were so mired in traffic that it looked like a NASCAR Thunder 2004 uh, challenge. I mean, oh yeah, try to pick your way through this in the next five laps and win the race. What? 
It's impossible. And they did a masterclass. Everything about this race was fantastic. Brad Keselowski came home third. Three of the oldest guys in the field figured out how to manage their tires better than anybody else. Not That shouldn't shock anybody. Should not come as a surprise. Overall, though, this race, like I said, I can't stress enough how much I enjoyed every single part of this race. Top to bottom, one of the best short track races you'll ever see. I said it was a certified banger. I'd give this race a 95 if I was going to score it. Jeff Gluck's Was It A Good Race poll better reflect how good this race actually was. And then you have other little random things to throw in there as well, like Kyle Busch's J-turn. Kyle Busch might be so angry at his pit crew, he could possibly pit this car by himself next week at Coda. He's got to be absolutely furious because, once again, they let him down. Par for the course, right? Just seemingly every single week, they do something to let this poor guy down. Austin Dillon, I don't even know why he was out there. He was in the way. I'll say that. He was just in the way most of the day. He ends up coming home 24th. William Byron gets caught up in an early wreck. He finishes 35th. Bad day for him. At one point, too, you had both Rick Ware racing cars running 10th and 11th. What, what are we talking about here? Justin Haley ends up coming home 17th. Kaz Grala ends up coming home uh, a little bit further down in 20th. 19th, sorry. 19th. Like I said, overall, John Hart, we check P6. Shout out to him. Just going through the list here to make sure we don't miss anybody that had another crazy run. Top to bottom, one of the better races you will ever see. Guys on the radio were talking about how great this race was. Josh Berry at one point said, quote, I love this shit. This is the coolest shit I've ever done in my entire life. And he was struggling on tires. It was phenomenal. Again, I cannot stress enough how much fun it was to have to watch a tire management race. For once, it wasn't about aero blocking. For once, it wasn't about tires not wearing and guys just being able to go out there and hot lap as much as they possibly could. Listen, I love a good fast lap time. Don't get me wrong. But this was really compelling. When you have tire management, when you have throttle management, it makes for better racing. That's why we all keep asking for 1,000 horsepower at these tracks or 900 or even 800 because throttle management makes for better racing. You don't need to have 36 cars on lead lap at the end of the race. You can have five. Today proved it. You can have five and you can have a super, super compelling race. If a caution came out there in the last 20 laps, it was going to be chaos out there. Overall, I like this race so much. I hope everybody else did too. I'm not sure if they did. I liked it. I know a lot of people on the internet seem to like it. Take this tire everywhere. And I know, obviously it wasn't all the tire because they've run this tire before. But this tire, put resin down everywhere. I don't really care on the short tracks until you can figure out a better solution uh, because it made, like I said, for a super compelling race. Is this going to work at Martinsville? No. Is it going to work at North Wilkesboro? Probably not. It did just get repaved. That's going to be a really interesting beast when they get there in May. Uh, they're using the same tire at Dover. Maybe put some resin down on the bottom lane at Dover. Let's see what can happen. Spice things up a bit. Overall, though, I hope Goodyear does not get spooked by this. I would hate for them to get scared and want to run away and try to do something different, bring a harder tire, something along those lines. Because, like I said, if the Bristol Night Race is like this, please give that to me. This honestly reminds me a lot of back in, was it 2005, Coke 600, when they levigated the track? Levigated. They basically grinded all the bumps away, and it made for like a cheese grater surface out there. It was chaos the entire night. I'm pretty sure it went almost six hours. It was a wild night. But it was compelling. And you knew they were going to repave the track, and they did, and it still looks brand new, just like it does now. But you knew if they went back there in the fall and did the same thing, it would be absolutely wild. So that's what I'm hoping for. I hope that when we go back for the Bristol night race, that they don't change a thing. Do exactly what you did this week. Sure, it's going to be warmer out for sure. Is that going to affect things? Probably. I mean, if we're being honest, probably. But at least try to repeat this, because this was, not only was it wildly entertaining, it was super compelling, and the best drivers rose to the top. Again, like I said, the three oldest guys in the field coming home one, two, three shouldn't be a shock. They've been around a long time. They know how to take care of their tires. They know how to take care of the car. It's going to teach these guys to go out there and race. You have to conserve. You have to be conservative at times. You can't just go out there, like I said, and turn in hot lap after hot lap after hot lap. Sometimes, in old NASCAR, you had to manage things. New NASCAR... Now nah, you can kind of go out there and just run as hard as you want because you know the car's not going to break. You know you're going to be able to aero block and your tires are more than likely never going to wear out. None of that was true on Sunday at Bristol. 
and it made for a super compelling throwback style race. Bristol went ahead and painted all the walls, throwback colors. They had a bit of a throwback weekend. And guess what? You got a throwback race and you have to absolutely love all of that. Let me know in the comments what you think about this. If you like the race, if you didn't like the race, if you didn't like it, why do you hate fun? Or just let me know. I'm curious regardless. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.